Hey, what is up? Welcome back. Um, <clears throat> this is probably going to be our second to last assignment. We'll do one. This will be due uh, two, no, Monday. And I'll probably have a combined probability assignment. That'll be due Wednesday. To be All right. So today we're going to be talking about the addition rule for probability. Um, and before we fully get into that, I just want to do one other definition, and that's just something called mutual exclusivity. So two events can be called mutually exclusive. Bold that. And that's if they cannot occur at the same time, all right? So, You'll see this term actually a lot in the world um, where they talk about mutual exclusivity. And for those familiar with Zen, di oh, this is Zen. Venn diagrams, all right, you might use them in <laughs> lots of different classes. So um, <clears throat> This would be an example of mutually exclusive events. Notice there's no overlap. And here are non-mutually exclusive events. There is some sort of overlap when they can occur at the same time. All right. So some examples of this. When we're talking about mutually exclusive events, uh, let's say you are rolling a die. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, rolling a three and a four, all right? You cannot roll both a three and a four at the same time, so those are mutually exclusive, all right? Um, let's say we select uh, a college student, and you say um, the events are selecting a female and selecting a math major. Well, those can occur at the same time, so they are not mutually exclusive, okay? So those are some examples of mutually exclusive and non-mutually exclusive events. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna talk about the addition rule. Let's just And this is also known as the or rule because you use it with the word or. So what the addition rule says is that the prop probability that events A or B will occur. All right, so that's what we're talking about. And the notation is just simply the probability of A or B. And that is equal to, unsurprisingly here, it's called the addition rule, we're going to be at. Now where the tricky part comes in is we're not just adding the two events, we have to take away anything where they're both occurring. The reason for that is that um, <clears throat> they get counted in both. And you'll see this in a minute uh, when we do a few examples. But before we do that, just want to note that if the events are mutually exclusive, we don't have to worry about that subtraction part. So then it just equals probability of A plus probability of B. All right. All right. So let's look at some examples. And I'm actually going to start with this table. All right. So the table below represents a breakdown of statistics of a statistic class at a large suburban high school. Um, we're going to say not ours because we have such a small class. 
but if we pick a student at random, what is the probability that it is a senior or a male? All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take the seniors, of which there are 14. So the probability of A would be 14 out of 23. Plus the probability of being a male, which is 11 out of 23. Now, the subtraction is interesting here because, right, we had the 14 seniors and the 11 males. Now, if I add that together, that would be 25 out of 23, which does not make any sense. The reason we get a number higher than one here is because these five senior males were counted both in the seniors, this 14, and in the males. So that's why we're going to be subtracting those five because they got counted in both the seniors and the males. So we do 25 minus 5. We have a common denominator, so that's nice and easy. <clears throat> so we get 18 out of 23, which if we want it as a decimal, is 0 0.783. All right, same uh, by the same token here. A junior or a female, I have, we'll do the juniors. There's nine, so it's nine out of 23 plus the females, females I have right here, so that's 12 out of 23. And again, there are a bunch that got double counted because these are um, not mutually exclusive um, events. There are the junior females got counted in here and in here. So those three junior females got counted twice, so I'm going to subtract that. So 9 plus 12 is 21. Minus 8 is 18. Oh, weird. We get the same exact answer. That's really crazy. So I don't even need to plug that into my calculator. And we get, again, 0.783. All right, a senior or a junior. Now, these are mutually exclusive events. You can't be both a senior and a junior. Right? So we can just add the seniors plus the juniors. Seniors, they're 14, so 14 out of 23. Our juniors are 9 out of 23, which gives me 23 out of 23, or a probability of 1, meaning there's a 100% chance, because we don't let any of those silly underclassmen in a stats class. They couldn't handle it. They're not you know, on your level. All right, let's take a quick look. Pick a card from the standard deck of cards. Remember, a standard deck of cards has 52 cards. So let's say we get, what's the probability of getting a four or an ace? Well, there's four fours in a deck.
and there's four aces in a deck. You can't get a four and an ace. Those are different cards. So this is mutually exclusive. So there's not anything to um, subtract. So we have a probability of eight out of 52, which reduces to uh, two out of 13. And as a decimal, that's 0.154. All right, a four or a heart, these are not mutually exclusive. So we have a four, there's four fours, again. Heart, there's 13 of each suit, so there's 13. Now there is one overlap here, and that's the four of hearts. So we subtract that, and then I get 16 out of 52, which reduces to 4 out of 13, which is 0 0.308. All right. Diamond or heart. Again, these are mutually exclusive. Probability of getting a diamond, there's 13 of them. Probability of getting a heart, there's 13 of them. No overlaps, so we end up getting 26 out of 52, or a half, or 0.5. All right, so this is the addition rule or the or rule. Um, do the assignment. Like I said, there'll be one more after this, and then you are done. All right, have a good one. Peace.